Mejor, hola. Uno, dos, uno, dos, one, two. Hello, everyone. It's okay. You hear it? Okay. So, and let's start with this presentation about green computing and underclocking. Um, So, let's get started. First, thank you everyone for coming over here at the campus party. Hello, internet. Um, my name is Rodolfo Soler. I'm a mechanical engineer. I'm specialized in thermal power plants. Also, uh, hardware and overclocking is my passion since I was 13. So, this subject is really in my interest. I hope you enjoy this. Um, let's talk about green, what's green and what's not. Understand what is green and what is marketing, what do we need. So to everyone to understand, cars is a very common subject, so let's talk about this. This is the Honda CRV from for, uh, 2008 and its average lifetime cost per mile is 1.478 dollars just on a study from dust to dust energy report and this is the famous toyota prius from 2008 the same the exact same year and its cost per mile lifetime is 3.25 dollars per mile so between these two cars um, the prius is an hybrid and may look greener but since the day it becomes just the materials. To the day it breaks and there's no fix for it. Uh, the Toyota one is less green than the Honda CRV. That's maybe not in your mind, but that's it. It just free your mind. This is not about marketing. This is this is a study. Dust to dust energy report from CNW Marketing Research. You can check it online. So. I'm going to show you some car that's greener than both of them. That's it. Renault 18 from 1980s. You wouldn't think about that. Why is this greener than those? That's what it takes. 65 cents a dollar per mile, an average lifetime. Why is this? Why is green this? So, although engines are better and better, um, our cars are bigger, are more comfortable, they are nicer, and they are heavier. So, yes, the engine is better, but the hole is not. You have to understand this. You can check it. That's, that's like that. You've been fooled by marketing many times. This is not green. So, we have to understand what's green and what's not. It's not marketing. It's the numbers what counts. So, let's apply this to the computers. Why not? So, can a PC be green? Well, the quick answer is no, because it's consuming energy, so it can't be green. So we are going to talk about the smart energy computation. Just know what we need in our computers in order to tell about the power or our needs. So we have to forget about marketing. That's all. Everyone is trying to fool you to buy their stuff, so just think by yourself. So we have to use the correct hardware by our needs. We don't have to buy the fanciest computer on earth just to use Google Maps. That's stupid. That's not green. Whether the computer has a green stick on it, that's not green. Also, we have to use the correct software. Uh, you have to think about computation in a whole. The, the hardware and the software, they're just one with the other, can be. So. About recycling, when you use PC, recycling, sorry. You have to use UPC only when you need it, that's obvious. And about recycling, the better recycling is using your old computers, not throwing them away. That's not recycling at all. And when we have a computer just bought, but we no longer need so much power, we can always underclock it. It's safe and it will consume less. So. Let's take an idea how much a computer consumes. So, 
obviously depends on the hardware and the software on the PC. So my PC, and this is my test, this is not numbers on the internet, I, I did it, which is these specs, Intel i5, um, with 95 watts thermal design power, and with 150 watt thermal design power for the graphic cards, two hard disk drives, and small liquid cooling, and when one big, uh, uh, what did I say? The big, um, sorry, the big um, power supply, sorry, that's it, big power supply, I didn't need it, but I had it in my, on my, in my house, so I used it. So this PC, which is more or less common, consumes, doing nothing, 77 watts, web surfing on Google Chrome, 18, 80 watts, with multimedia, like playing certain definition videos, 82 watts, with full HD video playing 90 watts, to design photo editing and all like that, like AutoCAD, Photoshop, is 95 watts, 3D design, but not rendering, just doing the, the piece, not rendering, 105 watts, real-time strategy game playing is 170 watts, look at the jump, Role playing game playing is 190 watts. And first person shooting uh, game playing is 240 watts. That's a lot. What impact does it have? So let's make uh, the calculations. For this desktop PC, consuming 2 kilowatts hour a day, that means 2.9 megajoules of energy, which is heat. If we generate that energy with a very, very, very efficient thermal plant, which is combined cycle, leads to 12 megajoules of energy a day each computer. So, using methane as fuel, which is common and very clean because it does not produce any contaminants but CO2, we need 285 grams of uh, methane every day for each computer. And that means uh, 785 grams of CO2 every day only for your computer. So let's be green. To be green with only one computer we should plant one tree every week only to absorb that CO2. So make the count. Do you, any of you plant one tree every, every, three, every three weeks? Does any of you do that? So none of you are green with your computers. I, I'm not. So to be completely uh, CO2 neutral, which is not only green because there are no contaminants, but just talk about CO2, we should plant over 200 or 300 adult trees and maintain them alive every year. That's each one of us, 300 trees, adult trees, and maintain them. We don't do that. We are not green. So let's do whatever. So. Let's know your, our, our needs. So I've made some levels, just made that up, about levels of needs in computing. So level one is web surfing and losing your time on the internet. I, I know every one of, of you do that, I hope so. Level two is the level one plus document editing, spreadsheets, all of that. Take in mind, please, where do you stay? So when you reach your level, Take it in your mind. So after you will check if you use the correct hardware. Level three is level two plus multimedia entertainment like video playing or music playing. Level four is level three plus graphic design or programming, which takes also more computer power. Level five is level three or level four plus casual gaming, like low graphic games. Doesn't have to be hardcore gaming. Level six will be the level five plus hardcore gaming or ben benchmarking. Do either of you know what's benchmarking? That's just um, like a contest of your computer. How powerful is it? Level seven, scientific application, same CFD calculations. Do either of you do that? Just check your level. So 
when you when I show you the correct hardware, just know if you are using it. And level H is real time industrial application. I hope no one of you, no one of you use this hardware for this need. So, in those levels, for the level one, you should use Intel Atom or is equivalent with AMD, just for just do it simple. All PCs, tablet PCs, or cell phones. Your cell phone can web the internet, and they have video outside, so out, out plugs, so you can put it on the monitor. Level two, just Intel Atom with integrated graphics. So see, it consumes like 30 watts. For the level three, Intel Atom plus Nvidia Ion, which is a quite powerful integrated graphics. For the level four, just make a jump to i3 plus a low-cost graphic. For the level five, Intel i5 plus a mid-range graphics. For the level six, the most powerful Intel, which is Intel i7 plus a top-range graphics. For the level seven, normally they use clusters or special hardware like big computer, like one room for each computer. I hope you, neither of you use this. And for the level eight, from small microcontrollers to special computers. This is not longer personal computers, but that's what it is. Let's talk about software. Uh, do either of you use the correct hardware? Either of you use it, the correct hardware for your needs? Do you know your needs, the levels? Does it match your level with your hardware? Let's take a look at it again. Those are the levels of needs. And this is the hardware. Yes, almost no one uses the correct hardware. Most of people use their PC for the level one or level two, and they stay over there and use it for anything but that. Just check your email, lose your time when you're working or something. That's what you use. So use your cell phone. That's the green. If not, you're just wasting energy. Now let's talk about correct software, and this is the the most important in the. In the, in the no one uses the correct software. Everyone uses Windows for everything. That's not correct. So for the three first levels, um, we should use Linux or even Android, which is a distro of Linux. Why? Because um, talking about computing, if you, we are using just uh, web surfing and something like that, we don't need so much services or processes running every, every time. That's what Windows does. Every time you start Windows, there's like 45 services running for doing nothing. So just use Linux. Why not? It's easy. You, are, you just need internet. That's it. And Linux has it. So in level four, which is design, the specific software will tell you if your operating system is compatible or not. So you can just choose. Four. The level five, we, I choose Linux plus Wine or Windows XP if we don't have any other option. For the level six, which was gaming, we should go to Windows 7 because the software requires. And then again, level seven, depending on the application, Linux or Windows. I always choose Linux, why not? And for the level eight, real-time Linux. That's the only option for real-time. Um, applications. So, is there any result or is just trash talk about that? There is a result from choosing the right hardware and software. So, this is the results for the Asus eBox 1021 versus my computer, which has a very different hardware. The eBox is very low uh, consumption power, power consumption uh, hardware, but also it's uh, low specs. You can do a lot with it. But this is the difference between these computers. The red one is my PC, my custom PC, in the first five levels, and the other one, the blue one, is the eBox. You can see, you can tell the difference. There's a big difference for the first five levels. You can go from like 100 to 25. That's the fourth part. Divide by four. 
the energy you use for computing. That's a lot. That's like you're using four cars for driving to 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 to, to the mall. You you don't need four cars. You need one. This is the same. Now about recycling. When when we talk about recycling, when, when everyone talks about recycling, it implies to throw the stuff to the container, to the right container. The, throw this plastic to the yellow one, but that's, that's not really recycling, because you're going to destroy that glass. That glass is not going to be used, you're just using the material, not the glass it, in, in itself. So, with computers, it happens that software industry makes heavier programs, heavier software, so you have to use heavier software, uh, heavier hard hardware, or, or the other way, it doesn't really matter who starts it, but it's a cycle. You have to choose. You have to change your computer every year to use the correct software. Or it goes slow because the hardware is heavier and heavier. That's that's the point to, to, of the of the industry. You buy and buy and buy and buy and throw and buy and, and throw and buy. That's not green. So why not using our all, uh, old PCs? Just use the right software. Use your old software. What's wrong with it? You don't you don't have to use the last version of every software. You don't have to. You make the same stuff just. It looks maybe a little bit, a little bit uh, more beautiful, the, the, the interface, but it's the same. So use it, use your old PCs. What can we do with, with our old PCs? Uh, for example, this is one of my hobbies, so I made an arcade machine with an old PC. It consumes like 20 watts. You can do this with an old PC. You don't have to buy it and, and spend thousands of euros. Just, this is an old PC. So, if you're not so handy with, with the tools and building, you can always uh, give your PCs to ONGs uh, for Africa for educational purposes. That's green. That's greener than throwing it away in the right container because someone is going to use it if it's not you. So please do that. Just give it to ONGs. They, Pick it that up in your in your home. That's the green computing, not a green stick on 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 your cases. That's not green. So let's talk now about underclocking, which is lowering um, it's a technique by lowering the operating frequency of our processors, whether it's a, it's a computer or even a cell phone, so we can produce less heat and even consume less power. Underclocking will affect power consumption and heat generation and also will lower the performance of your computer. So do it when you need it, not always. You will feel more the heat generation will be lower than the power consumption. That's not just that important, but heat generation will go really down with underclocking. Also performance. Underclocking, unlike under, uh, overclocking, will always be safe for our computers because they're going to get colder, not hotter. If you do it wrong, the only thing that will happen with underclocking will be instabilities. Just restart, do it again, and that's gone. The newest motherboards and newest computer have pre-built some software to do that. That's what I call automatic underclocking, like speed step from Intel, it's that technology. Intel speed step and AMD cool and quiet. New new software and new motherboards. That's that automatically. You just have to activate it. Also, new motherboards, I, I'll show you some some screens. Have pre-programmed configuration in your BIOS just for energy saving, you just have to make one click on it and that's it. It will, it, it will save uh, energy and, and heat production. So this is uh, a new screen of um, UEFI BIOS from ASUS. You can see the, the three, that's it, the three modes. That's saving power, standard, and this is like performance one. So most people just can put it on, on saving power, they will save power, they, will, they won't notice. This is click the overpower, overpower, but you don't need it. So most people of you won't need it. I, I am sure of that. 
So just go to your, to your BIOS, it's easy, just click on it. So for over underclocking uh, CPUs, which is the processor, the main processor, access to the BIOS, then lower the front side bus, now it's called BCLK frequency, which is on the lower multiplier, we can see the screen over here, you will see something like this. You just have to lower this number, BCL key, then the ratio limit or multiplier. So you will have like a 2.8 gigahertz processor working at 1.4, and that's it. Industry is uh, coming to overclocking. Industry does that. Just they don't they don't produce so different uh, processors. They they produce one and then change those numbers, and then you pay 50 more dollars for having 100 more hertz in your frequency. You can just change it with these numbers. That's it. That's not a lie. You can try it. So when lower the core multiplier, then this is the important part, lower the core voltage. This will lead to a lower heat generation and this will be better for our computer. Its lifetime will be larger and we will save money for electricity and also for our air conditioning because your computer makes your, your rooms be hotter. So there it is, there it is, CPU voltage. You put it on manual mode and then just lower a little bit. How much? Then we have to use this software that will check for us if this is okay or not. This is free software, Prime95. This checks every core of your um, processor just to know if it's stable or not. So maybe you just lower too much the core voltage. You have to put it again just a little bit higher. Or you can keep lowering it down. This, this will tell you if it's stable or not. So test the stability with Prime95. And then repeat again till the system is stable. If any of you do overclocking, this is the same, but the opposite way. Just go lower and lower and lower till we're okay. Now we can also underclock GPUs, which is your graphic card. You have to download your lastest drivers, that's every one of you may have. Then install this software, MSI Afterburner, which is free also. And lower processor and memory frequency when not playing. You can see this is the screen. It's really easy. It's free. You will you will notice that the heat generation goes down. You can just move those bar and lower the core clock and lower the memory clock and also the fan speed. You can lower the fan speed so you don't have so much noise. That's really easy and it's free. And then also, like CPUs, check stability of the GPU with Fullmark, which is also free software. There you go. You have uh, the option of benchmark benchmarking, which you are not doing, it, and a stability test. We will just put your graphics to the limit and see if it's stable or not. So if you lower it too much, you will have to repeat the process until it's stable. So also, you, have to, uh, you can underclock your Android device, your, your mobile phone. This is more to save battery. You will, this, is, this is wonderful. If you, if you, if you have um, an Android device, this program is, is wonderful. And the only thing is you have to uh, have root permissions, root permissions for your, for your device. Uh, the program is called SetCPU. This allows to under or overclock your PC, your cell phone, making profiles or, or manually um, with even trigger rules for optimal configuration. Like when you arrive to the university or, or to your house and you want to lower your, your battery consumption, this does automatically with GPS or just pressing one button. And this looks like this. This is your, your cell phone screen. So, in this top bar, you can choose the highest frequency when it's, when it's needed and the lowest frequency limit. So if you're not using the, the, um, the cell phone, it will be 
um, it will go alone to the lowest you, you choose over there, which will be the lowest you could. And when you're using it, like we're surfing or something like that, you can just lower it more. So it, you will save a lot of energy. You, you will notice your battery life expands. Like now it, it lasts one day. Maybe you will last two days with the, the same battery using this program. This is useful. That, not only because of the power saving, but that is better for us. My, my, my cell phone, I have to charge it every day. Every night I go, black. With this you can more or less use your cell phone normally and keep all day up with everything you need. So this is the QR code, so you can approach the screens, make a photo, and take the software. And, and now I want you to think and interact or have any questions for me, whether if you 